Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be talking about some work on improving the Shadow Simulator. Uh, this is joint work between the Tor Project, Naval Research Lab, and Georgetown University, and is sponsored by the National Science Foundation. So a little background on the Shadow Simulator. Uh, this is a tool for simulating the Tor network. Uh, it works by running the real Tor software in an emulated environment where we intercept every system call into the operating system and return an emulated result. In particular, when the application tries to communicate with the network, we feed that through a model of the network that uh, provides realistic uh, latency, bandwidth, and packet loss, and so on that you would see in a real global Tor network. So this is useful for analyzing attacks uh, against the Tor network and for uh, analyzing performance, especially trade-offs of parameter tuning or alternative uh, alternative algorithms for scheduling or congestion control. While this is, tool is built with Tor in mind, it's actually applicable to any application network and has been used with Bitcoin in particular. So what have we been up to? A lot of the work this year has been working on uh, a whole new architecture for how Shadow uh, actually loads the emulated processes. Uh, instead of loading everything into a single monolithic process, uh, the new version loads each uh, pro each process into its own native process. This has a number of benefits. Uh, one is that you no longer need to recompile uh, the software that you're trying to simulate. Uh, in fact, you don't need the source code at all. It also lets us use some other techniques for interposing syscalls. Uh, in particular, ptrace is a technique that lets us ensure that we catch every syscall where before we uh, could possibly miss some when using only LD preload, which is what Shadow 1.0 uses. Uh, this makes it uh, possible to work on programs that use custom syscall wrappers, uh, which includes Go programs, which previously didn't work in Shadow, and makes it easier to support adding new applications into the simulation, such as not just Tor, but a browser using Tor. The challenge with this new architecture uh, is that there are some extra overheads from interprocess communication and context switching. And some uh, initial results were quite a bit slower than the original Shadow. However, we've been working on uh, optimizing this, uh, in particular using techniques like spin locks and shared memory. And we've been able to close this gap quite a bit. Uh, in, addition, in addition to the new architecture, we've been doing some improvements on uh, kind of the shadow uh, code base itself. Uh, we've added an integration test, tweet, test suite that runs in GitHub on every proposed change. Uh, and it tests shadow on a number of uh, Linux distributions and compilers and configurations. Uh, and so this makes it much more likely that when you download and try to compile and run shadow, it's just going to work right out of the box. We've also been doing a number of uh, language migrations to more modern languages. Uh, our scripting is now fully migrated from Python 2 to Python 3. Uh, our configurations for, uh, for the simulations are being migrated from XML to YAML. And new code for Shadow itself is being written in Rust instead of C, which gives us uh, strong static type safety uh, while still maintaining C's performance. So our goals for next year uh, we plan to uh, do a release of Shadow 2.0 early next year with the new multi-process architecture. Uh, the next big change we're looking at is supporting running simulations across multiple physical machines rather than just one big machine, uh, which should make it easier to scale large simulations. We're looking at adding uh, some additional network modeling support, including better support for better, uh, more accuracy for our TCP modeling and uh, support for adding support for modeling uh, things such as routing. Uh, so you can use this today, and it's going to be a lot easier to use uh, soon. So thank you.